Hey guys. Okay. So this week we, for our general conference devotional, we are jumping into uh, prayers of faith by president Henry B. Eyring. And, um, as always, I have these study guides and I send them out on Monday so that you can, um, personally, uh, reflect. It talks about self-reflection on each of the conference talks and how they apply to you and, um, how can you implement these messages that were meant just for you? President Nelson talked about that in his opening message um, this year, that these messages are just for us and we need to understand how to hear him. And so I created these study guides for you to understand how to reflect on these messages and personally apply them to you. So I um, come up with the questions and then I personally study them and answer the questions for myself and share the information with you so that you understand how I got to that information. Plus, I would love to hear from you. And I feel like that just enriches our ability to um, understand what Heavenly Father is meaning for us. So this talk, I always give some, some quotes at the beginning of the talk about things that stood out to me and sort of reflect. Um, are part of the reflection question. So the first question um, that I thought of was, how can the restoration be a hinge point for me? So in the talk, he quotes President Nelson. President Nelson gave a talk in January, or more of a press release, I'm not sure what you call it, but um, he, in the footnotes, you can um, click on that. And President Nelson said that um, a singular event in human history was initiated um, initiated the restoration. So he's talking about the prayer that Joseph Smith gave and that initiated the restoration. And that was a hinge point. Okay. So, uh, president Eyring took that a little bit farther and I wanted first before that, I wanted to understand what is a hinge point? What does that even mean? Like you hear terms sometimes and you're like, yeah, I know what that means, you know? Okay. Whatever. But for me, personal study is understanding a word, what it means, where does it come from? And then it means something different to me, okay? So this is how I dove into hinge point. So I, I Googled hinge point, And the first thing that comes up with is um, a teaching model or something that there's a hinge point question in teaching. And <clears throat> those are questions that you ask your students to see if it's a turning point. Are the students ready to move on? And if they are, what direction do we need to move on? So hinge point questions. So Joseph Smith asked himself a hinge point question, right? Are any, which church do I need to join? That was what direction, uh, am I ready to move on? Am I ready to move on to one of these churches? Or am, um, and in which direction? And if I am, which church do you want me to join? That was his hinge point, right? That was his question. Um, and so that's the first thing I thought of is how can the restoration be a hinge point to me is what questions am I asking myself as Joseph Smith did to make hinge points in my life to know what direction to go. So President Eyring said that, oh, and then the other thing that I looked up was um, the term to hinge on something came up when I Googled it. And that means to determine or decide by something or it depends on something. So the restoration depended on something, right? And so what is, how can I use the restoration in my life to hinge on moving forward, okay? So this is what President Irene did. He said, um, I realized that my preparation for this conference was a hinge point in my personal history. And in October conference, President Nelson asked us to study about the restoration and study about the priesthood. So he goes on in the talk to talk about he studied and learned from the restoration. He read references to the priesthood uh, and about the opening of the dispensation. And he realized when he was doing that, he felt a change in his heart. He felt filled with joy and felt new gratitude. New gratitude. That's interesting to me that he used that term. He feels like if we do the same thing, we will feel optimistic and determined to serve the Lord. So it, also the restoration is the beginning of the last dispensation that the Lord is preparing for his, pe for his people for his return. So the restoration unfolded, right? This last dispensation where we are preparing 
for, he for um, Heavenly Father to send his son back to us and to rule and reign here with us, right? And so what am I doing with the restoration that can be a hinge point for me? So for me, it's about studying and learning about the restoration. That's what President Eyring is saying, is that we will be filled with joy, we will be, our hearts will change, and we will have new gratitude towards that. And that's the preparation that we can do for the return of the Savior. Okay, next question. <laughs> How can I participate in the restoration? Okay, so... Also in that January talk, I don't know what to call it, that President Nelson gave, he quoted him um, and he said, uh, or a quote from that is, the Lord has a vision for each of us. Just as he listened to the Joseph Smith's prayer in 1820, he listened to you and yearns, yearns to speak to you through the Holy Ghost. So we may look at the restoration and say, man, that was a really big event that happened for Joseph Smith. I'm not really that important. I'm not really that special to have such a profound impact in preparing the earth for um, the Savior's second coming. He says we do, right? I sometimes have those thoughts, but, you know, he's saying that we really do have an important role and that we can change that. So he said... In the talk, he says, he is quoting Joseph Smith. And Joseph Smith says that the work that has to be accomplished in the last days is one of vast importance and will call into action the energy, the skill, the talent, and the ability of the saints. So what we're doing right now is of vast importance. So I kind of thought about that and thought, what is my skill that I need to be doing to that's of vast importance to Heavenly Father. And um, about a year ago, I started praying about what is Heavenly Father's will for me? What is my vast importance on this earth? And that's a scary thing to pray for because he'll answer you. But what I felt like was that he needed me to help um, build the kingdom of God on this earth with my skills and my talents. I feel like my skills and talents are teaching and um, coaching people and um, giving people skills. So I thought, how can I do that in a, um, a, a way that Heavenly Father wants me to do that? And if this past year, I've really been praying about that and I've been honing in on that. But I really feel like that's his will for me is to use my skills and talents to do that. So I would encourage you to think about what are my skills and talents that he wants me to use. Everybody's are different, right? And they don't have to be, it, it can be within your own family. It doesn't have to be on a large scale, but you know, changing one person in the scriptures talks about that that will, um, can change lots of things just by helping one person come to the gospel. So, the other thing in there, he says that that we will he will call into action the energy. I thought that was interesting because as a mom, do we ever have energy, right? Like, okay, so he's going to call into action my energy. So how do I save my energy for these things that he's going to call into action for me? So that was another thought of mine. Like, what do I need to be doing to... Um, save my energy for that. And I thought of, I need to be doing those things for Heavenly Father first thing in the day, <laughs> in the morning. For me, that's where I have my most energy. And so I try to get up and study. I try to um, think about those things that Heavenly Father would have me do. I ve I'm very prayerful. My my prayers in the morning are my, my time to really ponder my prayers. I have a prayer throughout the day and prayers at meals and prayers with our family. But my morning prayer is my time to really connect with God and really meditate on those prayers. And so putting my energy, my the time of day that I have the most energy, and that may be different for everybody. For me, that's my, my time. Um, and so that's when I can really connect with God and understand his will for me. All right. Last one is, how can I fearlessly, humbly, and openly take upon um, me the name of Christ in my daily life? So this is a quote from the um, talk that um, he says that faithful and brave disciples will fearlessly, humbly, and openly take them the name, take upon them the name of Christ in their everyday lives. So how can I do that? Okay, that's what he's telling us that 
that faithful and brave disciples do. Well, I want to be a faithful, brave disciple. So what do I need to do to, that, to do to do that? Right? So I want you to follow this pattern. I found, I found this pattern that um, he talks about in the talk. First of all, it starts with having prayers of faith are the key to revelation. Okay. So what is a prayer of faith? Well, a prayer of faith is praying, believing you will get an answer. And then he says, asking what would he have me do with that? So once you, first you need to pray, believing that you will get an answer. And then when you get the answer, well, what do you want me to do with that? Right? Asking Heavenly Father. Okay. And then when we pray in faith, we will have, and we, we believe that and he gives us an answer. Guess what we'll have? We'll have an advocate with the Savior to accomplish those things. So the atonement of Christ is not just for sin or doing things wrong. It's an enabling power. It's a strength for us to accomplish the will of Heavenly Father on this earth. So once I pray about that and I believe that I'll get an answer and I get an answer and I go do those things, ask him what he wants me to do, I will have an advocate to strengthen me and help me do that. Okay. And then, so... Um, for me, I thought, okay, I need to pray to know what my role in this dispensation is. So we talked, we've kind of talked about that, that, you know, these are, what did he say? Um, these last days are of vast importance, right? And that my skill and my energy and my talents are going to be called into action for these vast, vastly important things. And that this restoration was a hinge point and a turning point. That it could be a hinge point and a turning point for me if I really truly understand it and dig in deep to those concepts. So those are my thoughts about the questions. I would love to hear your thoughts on that as well. That I always write down a promise that they gave in the talk. If we are to act on these principles and apply them in our life, this is the promise that they give. So President Eyring said, our ability to make our vital contribution to the wonderful continuing restoration will increase as we grow in faith in Jesus Christ as our Savior and our Heavenly Father as our loving Father. As we pray in faith, we become a vital part in the works, Lord's work as he prepares the world for his second coming. It's about praying in faith, right? And then he will prepare us to prepare the world for his second coming. All right, now, last thing that I always do, these things do nothing for you if you don't put them into action. My favorite word is action. We need to act on these principles, right? It's to learn what he's telling us and then act on these principles. So what can you do this week? Nothing giant, nothing life altering huge. What is a small thing? or What are you already doing that you need to continue doing? to act on these principles. So I came up with, I need to put my energy into building the kingdom of God first. So what is my energy, right? So I thought about, you know, I pray in the mornings and, um, and I put my energy there, but also throughout the day, I would like to ask myself as I'm doing something, how is this building the kingdom of God? And not in a negative way, not of like, oh, well, this isn't, so stop doing that, Nikki. That's not what I'm talking about. Most things that you're doing during the day are building the kingdom of God, but we don't make that connection. And then we don't feel like we're doing anything good. And we don't make that connection with God. We don't understand that when we're doing things to build the kingdom of God, we're building a relationship with our Godhead as well. So for example, you know, me doing the dishes, how is that building the kingdom of God? <laughs> right? For me, it is helping my family and it is doing service and it's, and it's being charitable for them. Those are principles of the gospel and that's building the kingdom of God. I'm being an example to my family of, of doing those, of acting on those principles. Um, I am uh, putting my energy into things that matter to my family and that is building the kingdom of God, right? So it really can be that simple, but looking at it in that way, that's mine for this week. That doesn't have to be yours, but I just want you to see how that can be helpful. All right, so I want to hear what are your action items, action commitments that you're gonna do out of the information that you learned. I also wanna hear you, what you've learned because I feel like that can be really helpful to other people. So participate in the comments here, message me, email me. I wanna hear what you're learning and if this is helpful to you. And if it is helpful to you, spread the message to your friends or your family and let them know about this. I feel like 
this is something that I've been called to do. And I feel like there's a reason that Heavenly Father is having me do this. And, um, and if you feel like this is helpful to you, maybe it's helpful to somebody else. And you are the way that I spread this message that Heavenly Father is wanting me to spread. So please, please, please share it with other people. Um, you can shoot them the email from the study guide that you get. You can tag people in this. Um, you can um, shoot them a text message and tell them to check it out. Um, everything helps and everything builds the kingdom of God. All right, you guys have a good week.